uh, hello, I'm Shibboleth. I'm the course leader of the BA Interior and Spatial Design. Um, and um, I'm here today with two of my students, uh, Anna. Can you wave, Anna? Hi. Anna is a Thank second you. year student and uh, Donia, who's a third year student. Hi. You want to wave, Donia? Um, so I'll do my presentation and then they'll present um, your presentation at the end. Uh, next. So um, I, I was recently in an open day in a different university uh, with my daughter um, and the, um, uh, the, the course leader of that course started the presentation with a globe uh, just like this and said, um, so what we're going to do in this course, we're really going to think, you know, there's there's a climate crisis and we're going to be looking at how we can take care of our planet. Um, and I looked at my daughter and I said, wow, that's amazing. I'm going to steal that idea. I'm going to put it in uh, in my presentation as well. Um, but the thing is, you the course that my daughter is applying to is environmental science, which I suppose makes sense. So you might kind of be thinking, what does this have to do uh, with what we're doing in interior and spatial design? Next, James. Um, so I think, I don't know if it's a well-known fact, but the building construct and construction industry of which interior and spatial design is part um, accounts for nearly about 40% of the carbon emissions, which are causing um, the issues we're having with climate, with loss of biodiversity. So really kind of our industry is, is having a really big impact um, on what's happening in the world. And I think this really means that we need to think um, how we can work differently, how we can kind of make a more positive uh, impact on the world around us. Next. And in response to that, the, the kind of all the leading interior design companies in the UK have joined up with other uh, with architecture companies, with others and declared a climate a biodiversity emergency, which means they're all coming together to really think about how we uh, how we can operate differently. Next. And as a course, we've responded to that and we've rewritten our course in um, uh, over the last year. Um, so the course that you will be starting on next year is a course that really kind of um, where we're really kind of trying to kind of think how we can um, explore um, the climate, climate justice, the climate emergency but in relation to the discipline of interior and spatial design. And we're asking you to think with us together how we can re rethink the profession. So really, really big ask um, uh, and a really kind of big challenge that we all need to kind of work together. Next. Oops. Just can you go back, James? Uh, yeah. So, um, so in order to kind of and and beyond kind of a um beyond kind of just kind of the climate um the climate and and the bio impact on climate and biodiversity, um how we design our spaces, the spaces that we live, work, um, uh, socialize. Um, can have kind of an impact on on people's life in lots of different ways, right? They can impact our health, our well-being, um, our sense of security. Um, so when we kind of exploring um, these kind of bigger issues, we're exploring them from a, a wide lens. We're really really looking how we can um, look at all these things at the climate, social, and racial agendas, um, and kind of bring about us um, in in terms of this idea of kind of um, justice. Uh, as interior and spatial designers. And we do that um, through kind of briefs that really ask you to engage with real, real world issues. Um, and I'm gonna ask James now to play a video um, that um, that shows kind of what example of a project that we've done that explores this. And I think it probably explains better than me um, what we're trying to do. Just bring that up now. I don't think the sound is on, James. Is there no sound? No. Not for you. Okay, one second. There was before when you did. It's how I shared it. Yep, they've unticked from it. There we are. Should be fine now. Let me go back to the beginning. Sorry, everyone. 
here we go again, it should be fine. The course as a whole puts at the forefront of everything we do, addressing social, environmental and racial injustices. So that's an overall ethos of the course. The Sustainable Exchange Project, kind of the way we introduce it to our first year students, getting them to engage with 11 creative practices in the local context in order to kind of make an improvement socially, environmentally sustainable. Copeland Park is the, the name of the area and the building and it's a bit of a creative hub. The students from UAL have been doing their sustainability project and been working with them for the last month. For today they've come back and presented an idea for us based on a meeting we had about things that work and what don't work in our studio space. It was essentially a station that allowed them to move their items, mainly their samples, Definitely for us, it's good seeing what the, the college is up to and seeing the calibre of the students and what they're producing and they can see what creative industries are around near them. They came in a few months ago and we talked about different ideas of sustainability in the studio, ideas about basically where we felt there can be a slight little improvements. And the students came in this morning to demonstrate a sink trap, which is basically something we put underneath our sink drainage to separate the clay and the water. And they also came in to demonstrate a drying rack that we could hang from the ceilings to help us more efficiently use the heat of the studio. We were tasked to create a sustainable intervention for them, so to find something in their space that they're struggling with. He doesn't have a lot of space and he needs to dry a lot of things, so we've created a drying rack. So we started meeting the client in November for the first time and we've been working on a storage solution for our client Griselda. He was very aware of her needs, but she also gave us a lot of creative freedom, so we did have to meet up with her and go back to her space to measure, look at everything, ask her questions. I really like the project because it's something I wish had happened at my school, where the school puts you in contact with the real world. When it rains in the warmer months, where we have tables outside, and we have to take food outside, then there's no shelter just outside the door. So the students came up with an idea of creating a shelter while also collecting rainwater. We made a table that had a, a system with, to collect rainwater. It's really nice because you're giving back to the local area and local shops. It gives us the experience that we would need for like our second and third years and also being in practice once we graduate. It was such a good opportunity to have and it's good to get that one-on-one, -on -one, like actually working with a client since this is just our first year. You are for I'm okay. Yeah. I'm just waiting for you to put the next slide. I was just going to say, because actually, uh, it's just one slide and then we have another film. Oh, that's um, fine. That we could have watched it, but it's all right. Um, so, um, so yeah, as you can so see, kind of we explore these things with kind of um, uh, through kind of live projects with, with um, local partners, um, really explore kind of how we can make, uh, yeah, kind of really uh, bring about sustainable change. Um, next. Yeah, so I think this is another film. Yeah, so sorry, that was another film. That's why I said probably we should have looked at it, but it's okay. <laughs> right. So the, the next film, um, the next film is, so this was a project we did with first year students. The next film is a project we did with second year students. Um, and whereas with first year students, we looked at some of these kind of big issues through a very local lens, working with local partners, the second year project um, looked to kind of more international kind of issues and how they impact um, and their impact and what we can do. Um, 
a few days ago, I was sitting in the studio um, and I overheard um, two of the students talking amongst themselves. And, and one of them said, oh, when I joined this course, I thought that everything we were going to do is just kind of make um, nice, kind of uh, beautiful, pretty spaces um, uh, for people. And all of a sudden, I have to kind of think about all these big social issues. So I did my research project on DR Congo and I didn't know anything about DR Congo basically before that and especially about the humanitarian crises over there. Um, but I really wanted to take this chance to learn about something I would never otherwise have like delved into. Now I feel like what I do is actually informed by the research. So I go in, find out everything I can about the subject and I start to design. It's quite difficult for designers to engage with the world, which is so complex and so many complex issues, whether it be migration or inclusion uh, or sustainability. They're quite big issues that can sometimes paralyze a designer. We have started an attempt of uh, exploring what should be the role of academia within the design practice. The major aim was to ensure that the students develop their own personal opinion of what is the role of a designer within the society. We place emphasis on ethical considerations, trying to equip students, but also staff and us as a learning community with the right language to talk about those very sensitive uh, situations. We look at is humanitarian design. That's looking at the designer's role, not just for designing residential interiors or hotels or bars, but actually thinking about what the designer can do in responding to natural disasters or man-made crises as well. They would be trying to uh, frame their research in a critical sense, trying to draw out the sort of spatial qualities of uh, what was happening in that particular context. At the beginning we had a talk on like design values. We were kind of introduced to how like politics is at play within design and how the different decisions that you make influences that. We indeed like introduce students to methods of thinking about collaboration, informed consent and socially engaged practice as a way of maybe designing with communities rather than just designing for. Interacting with the community is very intricate and it's very intimate. In terms of like understanding their needs and that research part of it, it's challenging at times. Before I thought design is something that the designer does and now the more I learn about design I learn it's more about what the user does. This year will be the beginning of a lifelong journey for them to start to understand how they think on any small level they can begin to contribute to this complexity in an unfair or unequal or unjust world. Thank you. I think we have no more films, so now we can continue the presentation. Um... That look okay. Uh, let me try that one more time. There we are. Uh, yeah. Next one. No, this one. <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, there you are. Uh, so, um, so yeah. Also, kind of, I said in the beginning that we've rewritten the course and um, uh, really to kind of um tackle these big issues of climate, racial, social um injustice. Um, we have been uh were quite a long running tours and we have been experimental throughout um, and i just wanted to start the presentation uh by showing you some examples of what our graduates and alumni up to and some of the kind of amazing things they're, they've been doing um and how they're really kind of pushing the boundaries of, of what the profession can be uh so yeah next so this is an example of um shipra um, Shipra is practicing in Rajasthan in India um, and she has um, her practice is, is focused very much on exploring um, how we can um, bring back traditional more sustainable techniques of building more environmentally friendly um, such as using mud and stone uh, she works a lot with kind of um, um, uh, workman and kind of skills that are slowly disappearing, really trying to bring them back. And she's uh, recently uh, been shortlisted for a design award uh, for the work that she's been doing uh, in India. Uh, next. 
um, and and she's also alongside that she's um, also been uh, working a lot with kind of very very low budget uh, project with communities who don't have a lot of money and really trying to see how she can kind of again use design in a very creative way uh, with little budget and make an impact so this is an example of a school um, and all she did here was basically transform the very kind of simple school through the use of color. So again, kind of really, really creative approach um, to, to kind of how we can use our skills. Next. Um, uh, this is a, in the middle with the red headscarf is Shukri. Um, she's a, a graduate of the course, but also now a, a lecturer on the course. Um, and she um, um, has taken the route of more um, an academic career. She's a writer, researcher, educator, um, and she's part of a collective of a group that used their voice uh, to um, bring change in how uh, the discourse um, around kind of design is happen happening kind of in magazines and the media and um, include kind of more diverse and marginalized voices in that in, in that discussion. Next. Uh, this is an example of uh, Sam. So Sam um, is working as a landscape designer. So this is something that she got interested in her third year, working more um, uh, with nature and including nature in her designs. Um, I think you can see there on the side, she was, um, uh, again, one of the kind of amazing things about our alumni, a lot of them very quickly um, um, set up their own practices. So Sam only graduated in 2019. Uh, already runs her own um, little practice in Malaysia, but she's also um, appeared on television um, as one of the kind of um, presenters of these programs where you have to transform a, a house in three days. So, you know, quite quite an amazing achievement for such a young designer. Next. Uh, Lucas is perhaps our most uh, famous um, alumni. Uh, Lucas works in in um, he's he he places himself between design and art. Uh, he works a lot with fashion, um, designs things for fashion shows for fashion stores. Um, so this is his kind of he designed this lounge for an after hours of um, a fashion show with Acne Studios, and he works a lot with the human body and how the human body interacts with the space. So these kind of pillows are all about how we play our body um, in different positions. Next. Uh, and then we have a lot of recent graduates that are going into these new fields of uh, virtual reality, um, uh, argumented reality. So this is Christina. Uh, next. Um, this is supposed to be a little film, so we'll jump to it. Yeah, but it's fine. We, we can't watch that now. But that was actually to show you that Christina, uh, whereas Lucas does real um, shows, Christina actually creates fashion shows in the virtual world. So again, going to this idea, how we can do things more sustainably. Um, this is um, Anya. Anya runs a practice. Um, so Anya identified a, a gap in the market of this uh, built to rent. So kind of uh, designing houses straight for um people to rent and so she decorate she kind of people who want to rent houses with already everything decorated um and she set up a very very successful business um on on identifying exactly this kind of something that didn't really exist um that much next and yeah to finish the example kind of um uh maddie who um uses her design skills uh to tackle um uh, life-saving challenges so she works um, uh, she set up her practice on the base of the tsunami in Japan where she did a project right um, after graduating um, and then she she's continued to work in that field and this is her here in an earthquake in Italy so she goes out right when the thing happens and really works with the communities um, to try to make a difference um, um, to their lives after experiencing such challenges next so that was a bit about our graduates um, and, and how do we get our students to be to kind of in 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 that place to be able to kind of do this wide range of things and to be um, uh, leading in their fields. Um, so kind of a little bit what to expect. Um, you'll be engaged in innovative project briefs. Maybe sometimes they're not exactly what you would expect when you come to a course, uh, but they are really to push you to, to kind of question things. Um, there are projects that cross traditional boundaries. Um, so kind of working in between different kind of um, 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 disciplines um, and really that 
other aim is, and Do I think Donia is going to talk a little bit about it in the end, is to really uh, help you develop your approach to the subject and, and the direction you want to take. Um, and just an example, one year we had... Um, we had a brief uh, where people had to design how might we ensure that everyone living in an area with poor air quality is guaranteed the right to clean air. So um, to show you the different approaches, this is a project by Jiro and what she did, she basically rethought um, social housing and how we can um, redesign the public spaces in social housing with more uh, uh, green spaces to bring the community together. Uh, but next. Next, oh, and yeah, this um, and another student, um, Emilion, uh, approached the same project. And what Emilion ended up doing, he designed a computer game. Um, so he actually kind of built the computer game. So he used his kind of the skills we learned, the digital skills we learned, um, to design uh, space, real spaces, and designed a virtual space. Um, and he designed the whole game. And the idea of the game when you play it is to um, is to understand more about how kind of pollution is created. Um, next. Yeah, so kind of, yeah, so we'll have kind of innovative briefs. You'll do a lot of practical workshops, particularly in first year and second year, kind of having um, the skills in order, a wide range of skills in order to be able to kind of push your career in, in a range of directions. So we do everything from building one-to-one -one structures, kind of building real things at full scale to understand materials and construction um, and how kind of things work in the real world. Next to kind of um, the latest kind of technology. Um, so really kind of doing projects um, with virtual reality um, and, and other kind of uh, latest technologies that are out there so that students um, um, have a wide range of skills they can then use to develop their own um, projects. Next. There's a lot of focus to, in order to address these big challenges that we're facing as a society. Um, we need to work together. It's really hard to kind of solve such big problems on your own. And for that reason, uh, there's a lot of focus, particularly in the first year and in the second years on building kind of your collaborative skills. So alongside the opportunity to do individual projects, uh, there is quite a lot of um, collaborative projects where you collaborate with each other. Um, in this example, also in first year you do, as you saw in the film, you collaborate with um, communities um, and with kind of real clients next. And in the second year, we do a big project where you collaborate with students from other design courses. So kind of really understanding uh, what skills you can bring to a project and what they skills um, other people can bring and how you can kind of use those skills together. Um, and, and the project in second year where they all work together is, is again about how we can address the climate, ch um, climate challenge. Next. Uh, and yeah, this is just the, the project you saw, one project you saw in the film. So as a course, we're part of an organization called Interior Educators, which brings together all the interior design courses throughout the UK. Um, and every year at the end of the year, they run a big exhibition of student projects, uh, but they also run um, an award scheme where kind of um, students get, the best students from across all these courses kind of get awards for project. Um, so it was really exciting that this year, um, our first year students won uh, the collaborative um, and interdisciplinary award for one of their projects. And particularly exciting because they competed against um, third year, second and third year students. Um, so yeah, it's nice that we're rewarded for these things that are really, really important for us as a course and amazing for the students. Next. Um, and another thing that we kind of do because we, you know, we think, you know, the work that students do is amazing um, and we want to kind of get feedback from communities, from other people and showcase it. We do quite a lot of public events and exhibitions. Um, um, so you kind of both kind of get to kind of practice kind of your skills of how you present your work, but also, as I said, yeah, get feedback um, from external collaborators and others. Um, but also this idea that, you know, one of the key things that some of our graduates want to do is they want to kind of go into exhibition design. So you get to really think um, how you can best showcase your work in, um, in different kind of situations. Next. Yeah, this is just another example of um, at the end of the collaborative unit. So there was a big event that the students designed. Next. 
Um, and yeah, this was just another example where we selected work again from the Sustainable Exchange Project was actually chosen to be exhibited in an exhibition alongside um, established artists. There was an exhibition about called Life After Life about kind of sustainable projects. So again, a really exciting opportunity for students to pre present their work um, to different audiences. Next. Um, and yeah, we have um, on the course, we uh, it's um, theory and understanding kind of the kind of the relationship between theory and practice is really important to us. Um, so there's a big emphasis on that. And we have a rich um, uh, a rich series of kind of lectures every year that ties to kind of student projects. Um, so yeah, from and the, the the lectures are developed both by our internal staff. So this is a, a lecture about um, uh, con comic books and how we can use uh, comics as a tool to kind of um, uh, tell stories and as spatial designers. Next. We also have quite a lot of practical lectures in our kind of dedicated makerspace. Next. Uh, and um, we uh, and we also another thing that we do, we run a weekly careers advice um, thing. So I think this is um, something very unique that we've introduced in the course. It happens once a week uh, and we have uh, we bring in the careers and employability team to talk to students about, you know, how to build CVs and portfolios. Uh, but we also bring some of the amazing alumni that you saw. So every two weeks an alumni comes in and talks about their career journey um, and, and kind of gives tips and advice to students. Yeah, on, on the direction they can take. Next. Uh, yeah, we can go to the next one. That's just another example of another alumni. Um, and um, yeah, we have amazing spaces in, in, in our studio. Um, I think James will talk about this in the end, but also you have kind of access to a lot of shared spaces um, throughout the university, which is the big advantage of, of being part of a art and design college. Next. Um, so a little bit about the course structure. Um, uh, so the course is three years um, with an optional kind of uh, an optional um, uh, year where you go um, uh, either to work in industry or um, in or kind of do a year in creative computing. Um, in the first two years, you have um, you have four units, two shorter ones of twenty credit and two longer ones of forty credit. And in the final year, you have two bigger um, units of 60 credits each. And I'm just gonna kind of go through that a little bit now. Next. So, sorry. Um, uh, so a, a typical week in, in kind of every year is usually you have um, one or two days of skills in first year it's two in, in, in second and third year it's it's one, and this is where we learn, uh, importantly, we learn kind of drawing skills, technical drawing skills, because that's the basis of, of our profession, of any spatial design profession. Um, and this is both hand drawing next. And digital, digital kind of drawing, so using kind of CAD software next. We do a lot of model making. We kind of, um, uh, alongside kind of using digital skills, we really value kind of making and exploring things through physical making. So you kind of learn model making skills next. And I think really unique to our course, we do a lot of one-to-one -one making. So kind of particularly in first year, we build things in full scale so that you really kind of understand these ideas of scales and materials and kind of how things work in the real world next. Uh, and then one day a week you have studio. So that's when you come in, discuss your projects with your tutors. Next. Um, and then, yeah, we usually have um, uh, throughout the week an hour or two hours of, of theory lectures. Like I said, theory is really important. And again, these are delivered either by our, our, our own professors like Professor Ken Wilder. Next. Or we invite really kind of world leading, exciting kind of external people. Um, so last year we had a lecture with Takeshi Hayatsu um, from Hayatsu Architects next. And we had Resolve Collective who are really one of the kind of leading young practices um, uh, operating in London today, um, really exploring these ideas of how we kind of bring diversity into the built environment, diverse voices, next. Uh, next. 
So in year one, yeah, as I said, you had four units. You have a first unit, which is about introducing you to 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 interior and spatial design, to the practice, um, to drawing, also introducing you to each other. I think that's really, really important uh, to get to know each other and work together. Next. Uh, we also introduce you in year one to the local area. So I think for the course, this locality where we are is very important um, because we, we really believe that um, as designers, um, the most impact any designer can make is in their immediate community. That's where we can really kind of bring about change. So we explore that through our projects. Uh, so we do a mapping project to understand the local area. Next. Um, and we introduce you to, to kind of skills again, as I said, kind of drawing skills that are key to everything we do as spatial designers. Next. And yeah, one and, oh, and our second, so our second unit is 40 credits. That's the unit where we do a live build project, um, something kind of bigger. Um, and again, you saw that in the film with with um with local partners. Next. Uh yeah, just another example. Next students taking again we continue to kind of explore in that unit really pushed um really push drawings um we kind of um move into digital drawings very quickly um in the second unit next um and our third unit unit is um a 20 credit unit that's the unit where we bring together theory and practice um it's a unit where um we ask our students to read a piece of text. They then have to make a model, a, a model of a city based on it, and also write, a, a, do a piece of writing, uh, reflective writing. And in the end, we have this amazing exhibition of everybody's models. Next. So this is the book they read, um, Invisible Cities. Next. And then produce this model based on a city of choice. Next and do a piece of writing where they kind of explain their process and, and analyze their reading um, and reflect of it on it, kind of also using um, other academic sources. So that's how we bring together the theory and the practice, which again, I think is something quite unique um, that we're trying to kind of do on the course. Next. And our final unit, socially engaged design, is where students take what they did with the group in unit two um, and they develop it into an individual project um, of their choice so this is just an example of Ankai um, and he took the group project that the students did on the site um, and developed this idea of um, um, a, a park for local do dog walkers but it's also a park a kind of rain rainwater collection system so really pushing this kind of um, both socially engaged project and, and sustainability in his project next just another image from his project next yeah and that's another image so really you can see how the skills have advanced from the start of first year to the to the end of first year next uh next so i'm going to do second year a little bit now so um so the first project in second year is a 20 credit unit is a short quick project the students have just finished that now um, where the students have to design a public toilet. And um, Anna is going to talk a little bit more about that, so I won't say much, but it, it's all about kind of um, stu asking students to look at inclusive design, look at is issues of public and private space, of gender, um, exploring these really, really important issues to this idea of a public toilet. Um, and there's a really big push in that unit on, on um, uh, improving students' 3D digital skills. So whereas in second year, it was mostly hand drawing and 2D drawing and kind of making here kind of these 3D digital rendering skills um, are really pushed. Next. Just another drawing, yeah, from that project. Next. And then a second project in second year is the collaborative project where students work with students from across other um, courses in the design school responding um, to, to the climate changes, how they can propose things together. So for instance, in this group project, students um, suggested that the university have a recycling facility where students kind of exchange um, um, exchange materials. So they kind of yeah, designed it through a series of models. Next. And then the third project um, is a 20 credit project again in the second year. It's uh, it's again this project where we bring together theory and practice. Um, and here the students were asked um, to look at um, the idea of the other. 
um, you know, who are, who is this kind of, who is this other that inhabits our cities, um, particularly kind of looking at kind of nature and, and wildlife and how we can start to think about um, designing with these others in mind um, when we, um, when we do projects. So um, it involved um, site analysis as well as kind of looking at this topic through kind of research and writing. Next. And the final project in the second year is based on what the students did with their um, with that theoretical piece of work that you saw. They develop an individual project. So this project by Gigi is uh, a project where she kind of um, designed this kind of designed a, a bridge in 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 a local park that enabled people to um, reflect more through the kind of encounters, reflect more on our relationship with nature. And really, you can see again kind of the development of the kind of digital skills. Oh, you went back. I think, James, uh, yeah, you can see the development of the digital skills um, um, towards the end of second year. Next. Yeah, just another slide from this project. Next. Next. So, oh, so just to say oh, in the middle, um, in the middle there, there is an opportunity to, um, as I said, between second and third year, there's an opportunity to do a diploma in professional studies um, or creative computing. And if there's anybody in the audience who wants to hear more about that, I can um, talk about that in the end um, next. But also in the second year, there is an opportunity to go on an international exchange for a term. Um, and um, sometimes through these kind of collaborations that we have with universities, um, uh, we get to kind of also um, go on trips with kind of selected students. So this is kind of uh, myself and um, Colin and a group of students who went to Bilbao to do a workshop, which was really, really exciting. So these opportunities come up occasionally. Next. And next. And so the final year, there's two kind of um, big um, big um big units so in, in, um and the first one is where again kind of students bring together um the it's called critical spatial narrative so it's a combined theory and practice unit so the students do a, a piece of writing on the topic of their choice so it gets very very individual and they use that that writing as a way to kind of then explore a specific place or site um and then define what they would want to be working on for their final project. Um, I mentioned before that we're part of the interior educators and our students have won prizes for their work. Um, and it's really exciting for us that our students have won prizes both for their written work um, and for their design work, uh, because I think we value both of these equally on the course in terms of kind of the careers that our students want to go into. Um, so this is the a project by Eugenia that won the interior educators writing award next. And this is a project by Aminat that um, didn't win, but was shortlisted, which is equally amazing for an award. Um, and her project was um, uh, she looked at um, uh, at social at social housing. She she's a local resident. She grew up in Peckham next to the college um, and she brought her personal experience um, to kind of try to understand um, bigger issues of failure of social housing in the UK. Um, next. And based on her writing, she created this amazing storybook um, that um, looked at different generations of um, people who lived in the local area um, through their interiors and how their interior, the interior design of their homes has changed and how that reflects um, on the social, bigger social changes. Um, so yeah, another amazing project that was shortlisted, shortlisted for a writing award. Next. Um, and then the final unit is where students take what they've written and develop an individual project um, of their kind of choice of scale, um, uh, scope. It, it really is quite open and skills they want to use. So this is another kind of um, project winning project by Kiwi. Um, so she won the prize for Interior Futures, so kind of project that thinks about how uh, we might live differently or operate differently in the future. And she did an amazing, an amazing project looking at um, the use of unused spaces, um, reuse of unused spaces in our urban environment, in this case, a car park, uh, which she transformed into a temporary cinema. Um, and the idea was that cinema um, would support um, uh, homeless people. So it kind of hosts this kind of film festival for homeless people. Um, so that's kind of her project. Uh, next. 
Uh, another project that won a kind of prize is, is this project by Natsuno, um, and she won that a couple of years ago for, an, again, an amazing project. She kind of, it was called Be More Dog, and it was about trying to see how we can um, uh, understand our environment through the eyes of a dog and design um, spaces that uh, reflect that. So not really designing spaces for how we think uh, dogs might want them, but trying to understand what kind of spaces dogs might want and how that might mean we design the public space. So really exploring that idea of the other next. And yeah, dogs are very popular. And of course, I don't know why, but we had another amazing project that was um, got a commendation in the Interior Design Award. Again, th that was this year uh, by uh, Teresa. Um, and I think what was slightly different and interesting about her project is that um, it was very much a making project. She actually worked. She collected dog hair and she asked this question, um, why can we use hair from cows or sheep for our furniture, for our home furnishings, but not dog hair, which um, actually goes to landfill. Um, so next. So she kind of used the hair from uh, hair from kind of dogs that she collected in, in local saloons and transformed it into home furnishings. Um, so really kind of uh, a making project. So you can see kind of again that our third year, some of them would do much more speculative projects explored through drawing, but some of our graduates really take that one-to-one -one making that we do in first year um, and develop projects that involves a lot of hand hands-on kind of making and um, and um, suggesting kind of new, new ways to kind of um, uh, as I said, for the practice and how we might operate. Next. Um, so yeah, just to kind of, before I finish, just to remind everybody, um, so this was a, a lot about the course, but just to remind you that by joining the course, you're also joining UAL. So you're joining this amazing uh, world's biggest factory for making trouble, like um, uh, was said by Grayson Perry, who was is not our chancellor anymore, but he was uh, up until last year. Um, and you get access to a lot of kind of lectures, facilities, exhibitions um, of this kind of um, huge university. Next. Um, and we, a university is the top uh, two university, world art university in the world. Um, I think second only to the, to the RCA, which is, um, again, you know, you're joining this kind of very prestigious university next and amazingly i mean um last year we were also ranked number one interior design course in the interior design kind of uh not course program so this includes the other interior design courses um in the university uh by the guardian so i think um this really kind of reflects the amazing work um that our students are doing and our alumni are doing out there next um and i think just Quickly to mention one of the maybe not what so well known UAL is also the number one ranked university for producing business leaders. So I think I showed a little bit when I was talking about the alumni, a lot of our alumni go on to set their own practices. Uh, but this is, you know, um, something that happens across the university. And this is just an example of Chinella, one of our graduates next with um, our, the chancellor of the university, James Purnell. Um, and um, I think I, I like to mention Chinello um, at the end because um, Chinello um, took her career in a slightly different direction. Throughout the course, she was very involved with the with the student union. She was a course rep, um, and I think she moved on to to kind of perhaps not work in a straightforward design, but she very quickly set up her own practice, um, and she works a lot with charities. Um, trying to help, I mean, she's a care lever, trying to help other kind of people who came from care. Um, she does project, for instance, like she's now doing a really interesting project where she's helping care leavers design their first home, um, but also doing kind of a lot of speaking commitments. Um, so, so kind of working on the edges of the design, but really kind of using the skills that she gained um, from the course to kind of push her, uh, you know, push kind of very important agendas. Next. Um, so what are we looking for? Um, I think, um, you know, because we're very, uh, it, it, because these issues of um, social and um, uh, social, environmental, and racial justice are really important for us, we do want you to show in your kind of submissions that you have awareness. It doesn't necessarily mean that you've done projects, but uh, we want to kind of understand um, why these issues are important to you for some way through the kind of work that you're presenting. Next. 
we're looking the work that demonstrate the personal agenda. So we're really interested in, in, in kind of what you, you want to say, what you have to bring. Um, so it's kind of for you to think how you present what you might have done in school uh, or, or elsewhere, but how you kind of through that kind of show your own personal agenda and what you're interested in next. We want to see a range of art and design skills. Um, it is good if you have, you can show some kind of aptitude for thinking spatially, but it's not necessarily what we're looking for because um, we, we will kind of be teaching you that. So kind of any art and design skills that you can show um, and as many as you can show are great. And we want to see final things as well as kind of sketches and process work. Um, both are equally important for us in terms of understanding um, who you are as kind of um, as designers and people. Next. We want to see how you organize the work. So, you know, how you select and organize. Um, we don't want to see everything you've ever done. So how do you select? How do you organize? How do you prioritize certain projects in your portfolios? Next. And mostly we just want to see that you're curious and enthusiastic. And this is something that you're really, really passionate about because I think a lot of the other stuff um, we can we can kind of teach you on the course. Next. And I think that is it. And we're not doing Q&A now, right? We're doing the presentations by this. Exactly. Week. We're going to swap over to Anna and Donia. I'll just get your slides up. Hopefully I wasn't too long. <laughs> no, you were fine. So Anna and Donia, that should be your presentation ready to go. Hi, Anna and Donia, are you okay? Just, I can see you, yes, Anna. Yeah. <laughs> Grand, okay, so let me know when to move forward. Okay, perfect, uh, you can move on. So, um, hello everyone. Uh, we are both um, students in the Instagram Spatial Design. Um, I'm a second year student and Donia's third year. Um, so I'm a little bit newer to the course, but I have experience with uh, one year. Uh, so my name, my name is Anna. I have like other responsibilities as being a student ambassador, which, um, if you have any questions about being a student ambassador and wanting to represent the school and giving tours and things like that, I will happily take questions for that because I think it's a great opportunity with like getting to know the course, getting to know the whole university, you'll feel more confident walking around and then it just feels like you're giving back to the community by helping these students as well. Um, so I'm just going to build on a few things that the course leader Shavuot has been talking about and then start sharing our personal experiences. So the course like main idea is it delves into like principles and ethical considerations of interior and spatial design. Um, like throughout you will embark on a journey where it like threads climate, social, racial justice and interwines the art of interior and spatial design. So you're giving back to the world in creative ways, which is, I think, a very wonderful thing. So next slide, please. Okay, next slide. There we are. Okay, so looking into first year, uh, you may be curious about like the different opportunities you'll be able to do. How will you start? Um, will you be able to fit in if you have any different backgrounds, which is perfectly fine. It's perfectly good question to ask. So the whole point of first year is to nurture you into this like um, design journey and how to make your ideas come to life. So um and like trying to discover like your design identity so i started off with having a intense background in fine art and textile design woven with like an interest in human and physical geography so this is like where my like climate awareness comes in like where i wanted to give back to the world um so my curiosity led me to expand my existing design skills and apply them in spaces and like rising world issues 
So next slide, please. Okay, so for so looking into the first year techniques, in the start of first year, you are encouraged to explore and expose yourselves to possibility of techniques and it being physical or digital. So you are given the freedom of if you are confident in, let's say, physical skills, and that's what you've been doing in your like previous experience, then you can definitely apply this into the design journey. And slowly over time, you'll be able to bridge, to make a bridge between physical and digital skills. So this is what I started doing during a uh, first year. So it was very much like sketching, using pencils, fine liners, and then going into digital skills like um, on iPads, Procreate, uh, Illustrator, Photoshop, and this is all done like, um, you know, progressively. Uh, you can always find help with technicians and things like that. So it isn't a huge jump. You just do what you're comfortable with and then it just keeps on building up. So everything, anything you can bring to the table is your advantage pretty much. So next slide, please. Moving into uh, year two. So, I've just started year two in September, so I am quite new, but the first, uh, like the main things I noticed about year two was that we were, you know, they were encouraging us to develop more digital modeling programs like Rhino and SketchUp. So as Shibala talked about before, our unit of five was to do with public toilets. And it may not sound, fantastic but um there was a huge learning journey around it um it was considering we were given like a ready space it was a tunnel in south kensington and um so it's an existing space that you have to go and learn about and you have to learn about the history so what i did was learn about the history and it being a very victorian dominated area so i applied this in the design because i believe like history shouldn't die so what I did was, you know, looking to the patterns. It's a very interesting design process through sketches. So this was like one of my final renderings that I did on Rhino, uh, which I got technical support for. So everything is a built up journey, as you can see. Uh, last slide, please. The next one. OK, so you may be wondering how, what did I actually supply in, a, in my portfolio? So as I said, my portfolio was very much a uh, textile and um, fine art orientated. But as you can see, it included, my portfolio included a range of um, variation of media and exploration about what I was passionate about in my previous years of study. So the concept of all my works is that it showed a journey of capturing different spaces that I was inspired by. So it may not, be a space that you're inspired by, it may be something else, but the whole point of like the portfolio is to show the progress of how you can have an idea and show that you're passionate about it. So mine was all about, you know, capturing a space and then seeing how people and nature can influence them. So mine was very historically orientated. It was to do with my culture in Bulgaria. It was to do with um, traditional Victorian architecture. It was with architecture found in Rome. So it was showing different media and how I progressed through it. So that's what my portfolio included. So I am done. Uh, I will pass you over to Danya right now. So thank you for listening. Hi everyone, thank you Anna. My name is Donia and I'm a th third year student at Camberwell ISD. I'm also a third year course rep, um, which means that I just collect feedback from other students in my year group and pass it on to tutors and Shibboleth, who's the course leader. Um, so uh, as Anna said, um, the beginning of year two would be more um, like focusing on your digital skills and then um, you will go into unit six, which is all about like um, collaborating it's a collaborative project and you'll have the opportunity to collaborate with students from other year, like uh, from other courses uh, and 
it's really good because um you get to build that like a connection and network um and also learn different skills which is really important because when you go into the industry uh, you would you wouldn't be working on by yourself you'll be working with like others from different backgrounds so it's just really important to um, reflect on that collaborative journey next slide please um and then um towards the end of second year um your unit seven would be more of like a theoretical approach and then your unit eight would be like um you know having that like project which like looks back at what you've written um so what i really like about um second year and like isd in general is that uh, it's a lot of like exploring and experimentation which is really important um like as a designer to just push yourself out of your comfort zone the university is amazing like uh workshops and like um we have the 3d printing um like the printers here in the studio so that's what i did i kind of like um use the 3d printer in my unit 8 project um next slide please um so then um uh you also be working with a lot of like um CAD softwares and 3D modeling softwares like Rhino, SketchUp, and rendering. Um and this is like um my unit eight project, which was about designing an accessible playground, uh, which focused on like accessibility, inclusive inclusive design and diversity. Next slide. And then um, you like following into third year, I just started this September, but um, there will be two units. And the first part of the third year would be writing your thesis. And um, this is a collage I did. Um, so you really get to like uh, look back and see like what you want to become as a designer. Um, and yeah, that's it. Sorry, the fire alarm has gone on. So I think I need to leave. <laughs> if that's okay absolutely yes of course sorry, sorry donia don't I'll worry leave, yeah i'm sorry thank you very much thanks that's the first time that's happened in running these for a few years um that was the last slide for donia there and that's a slide covering her um what she submitted in her portfolio in her first year i can't speak to us in any detail um and and do you have anything to, that you might know or she about this work um, I don't know. I think this is what she applied with. So I think again that she probably wants to wanted to share the kind of range of skills, but also maybe to highlight what I kind of said that we're not necessarily looking for um people who particularly have spatial design skills, but but more kind of a wide range of skills and really showing kind of creativity and curiosity for the subject. Perfect. Thank you. And I think that was the last slide anyway. So great. Um, I'm just going to give, I'm aware we're getting close for time, so I'm just going to cover maybe five slides. And apologies, there's certainly noise outside for me as well. Um, just looking a bit at the broader um, the, um, services available to you when you join UAL, regardless if it's in Camberwell on this course or in another college across UAL. Um, one of the things we highlight is the UAL library services. There's the physical libraries, which are in each of the six colleges. Um, which you can access with your card, what your ID card, you can access all the sites with your ID card. Um, but there's also a digital aspect as well in the sense that you can access a lot of um, uh, work available digitally online as well. There's also LinkedIn Learning, which is a whole range of video-based course, uh, creative practice, business skills and technologies covered within that. You can access that for free with your ID, your email login and ID. Um, and then there's another thing called Box of Broadcast, which might be useful for research, which is basically a documentation of all of the re TV recordings and terrestrial TV. It goes back quite far, I think well into the 90s. So that might be quite useful as well. And the other thing at the top there is UAL's archives and special collections. You may not um, use them directly. Some courses bring them in more than others, or you may decide to use them yourself and request more detailed access. You can do that. Um, but you can also visit them as a curious member of the public as well. They are open to the public as well. Um, and they're scattered across the different colleges as well. And there's a whole web page dedicated to those on UAL's website. 
Another thing to flag in each of uh, the colleges is the central loan store. There's this hub where um, useful equipment is held that you may want to use, which you can access for free. There are fines if you submit, if you return them late. Um, so make sure you don't do that. Uh, but it can be a range of things from if you want, um, if you need a laptop, for example, and you don't have one on site at that time, uh, TVs, SLR cameras, video equipment, uh, lighting, sound equipment, that kind of thing. Depending what it is you're doing, you might want access to these. You may not want to buy this equipment, so it's handy to be able to kind of dip your toe in and out of these things. Um, careers and employability, we might be jumping a little far ahead if you haven't even applied to a course yet, but it's just nice to know that this service is available and they engage with you after you graduate for many years. I think it's five years afterwards, you can still be engaged with the various, um, the emails that they send and so forth. Um, there's also the Alumni Association, which then would carry on there as well. Um, but the types of things that you can um, avail of here are one-to-one -one service advice. Um, they post job opportunities, paid internships, there's mentoring and funding advice as well. And then student-led initiatives, as well as showcasing your work, perhaps in, as part of an exhibition. It's all free and available to students across UAL. Um, and Pretty much one of the last things I'll mention is student services. So this encompasses um, just general advice, really, but as well as that academic support, counselling, health advice, the chaplaincy service and the disability service. And one of the reasons this is important to think about at this stage is um, you may have a specific requirement that you will need to put in place when you are a student on the course. The earlier you raise this, the better, so that we can understand how we can accommodate you. And if things need to be put in place for you, then we can do that early um, rather than doing it uh, in the week that you start. Um, and the team are very happy to chat to people before they apply. There is staff based in the colleges, but there's also a central hub in uh, at the moment that's based in High Holborn. Um, but there's a simple form you can fill out um, to get your questions answered if you want to do that uh, before you start. And the last thing I'll end on is the Students' Union. They're also another way for you to get advice and information about what it's like to be at UAL. Uh, they run Maiden Arts London, which is exhibition and exhibitions, a uh, series of exhibitions that they run for students to sell their work. work. Um, and it also encompasses societies and sports clubs, depending on what your interests are. There's a huge range and you can look at all of that on their website as well. And that's it. We're in the, we've got a QA and a sign. I'll just put this up while we're going into Q&A as well. We have our social media handles. That's Camberwell's general one at top. But then below that is the BA interior and spatial design handle as well. So please do follow both of them. I feel it's the best way to get quite current and rich information about the courses um, while you're thinking about applying. Any questions after this uh, um, presentation, please do contact the email address. It comes to my team. Um, and we will make sure it gets to the right person and we'll help you get an answer to the question you have.